Hello, this is Patrick from 1CNC West, and in this video, we're going to take a look at four axis wrapped machining. Now, this is where we're machining geometry that's been wrapped around a cylinder, things like pockets, profiling, engraving, slots, and things like that. All right, now what we do is we essentially machine the unwrapped geometry, and that unwrapped geometry can be extracted from a solid model, like I'm going to show here or you can go into your lines and arcs and create your unwrapped geometry that way if you'd like. But in this case we're starting with a solid model and so I'd like to show you how one CNC can unwrap the geometry for manufacture. All we have to do is come up here you'll notice we have this button up here this is our unwrap tool and all you have to do is take your cursor and hover over the cylindrical surface that you'd like to unwrap. As soon as I do that I can left click and if you look over here to the right you can see there's our unwrapped geometry. Now this vertical line or this uh, horizontal line that you see here is actually from the split in the solid model. You can see there's a split there. All right, but this is the geometry we're concerned about and that's these pockets over here. All right, now to machine this, here's what we do. First we come up here to the NC manager and we go to our set machining axis and this is where we're going to select the type of uh, multi-axis machine that we want to use. We're going to use the four axis wrap option and notice we have to put our diameter of material which is six inches in this case that's that diameter right there and the material length and we'll go ahead and click OK to that. Alright now as soon as we do that one CNC unwraps the geometry and it, it's set up actually for manufacture internally now so it knows what to do with our toolpath. Now all we have to do is just apply whatever toolpath we want. We're going to go over here to our stock toolpaths and let's use just a pocket cycle. And we're going to pick by boundaries. I'm just going to left click each one of our pockets and then right click when I'm finished. And now what we're doing is just selecting the type of end mill. I've got a half inch end mill in here. I don't have any stock selected. Why don't we just quickly select some stock and let one CNC figure out the speeds and feeds for that. Now the rapid plane, <clears throat> that has to be higher than the radius of the part. Now remember our part has a 6 inch diameter, so the radius is going to be 3 inches. So a nice clearance plane or safety plane would be 3.5. And the material top, we can use 0 because the unwrap is going to take care of that. The final depth is going to be a half inch. And this plunge clearance is where the feed rate is going to start. That's this green uh, representation right here. So 50 thousandths is okay. Uh, if that's a little bit uh, too close for you, you can change and put in whatever you'd like there. I'm going to use high speed machining. You can use traditional if you want, but let's go with high speed machining for our pockets. And we're going to helix in. I'm not going to take any rough depths for this example. And I'm going to say all oh, this looks good. We'll click OK to that. Let one CNC calculate the toolpath for that. That looks good. So there's our toolpath and you can see now that we've machined the unwrapped geometry. Now I extracted that geometry from the solid model using this tool right here. Or you could create this unwrapped geometry using lines and arcs and machine it exactly the same way. Now if you want to uh, preview this you can certainly do that. We're going to right click and we'll select preview toolpath. And that'll take our part. You can see now we're helixing down inside the pocket and now we're performing the the high speed machining on the pocket. Now high speed doesn't mean you have to kick up your speeds and feeds. You don't have to do that. You can just keep your speeds and feeds the same and what the high speed uh, tool pass will do is extend your tool life and also extend the life of your uh, your rotary axis, your machine tool and things like that because you can see there's no there's no sharp corners there in the tool path. It's all rounded. Okay and so we're we're coming in and we're just performing nice curved moves on there. Now if you want to take this a step further you can certainly create tooling if you'd like to and you can see now if we go to our layers I've got a layer called 4 and a layer 3. This is so simple because what 1CNC does is any piece of geometry that's set on layer 4 is considered 4 axis tooling and what that means is that's going to move with the part. And You can see I've got a, a chuck here with some jaws and then on my three axis layer, you can see I've got a layer called three. That's going to be our stationary tooling. That's not going to move at all. All right. So let's go back now into our, our preview tool paths. And now we can see we've got our tooling moving. 
Let's move that and kind of pan this around a little bit so it looks a little bit better. So you really can get as detailed as you'd like. Very, very simple to set up. Not complicated. Just make sure that your, your four axis tooling is on layer four. Your three axis tooling is on layer three. And then any part component that you'll have will rotate along as well. So it's very, very simple to set up. Now I just did pocketing here, but profiling, slotting, engraving, holes, all those things work just as easy as what we've just demonstrated. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.